this world to me I won't trade you for silver or gold I won't trade you for riches untold You are You are my I wouldn't trade 
since my heart cry. I need more of you, Lord Jesus. No one else. The more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you. I want, I want, I want to go Sakaba. I am nothing. Without you, I am nothing. I'm just a vile vessel. Without you, I can make nothing. Without you, I am dead. Without you, I am nothing. The more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. God of us. I want more of you I want more of you the more I know you the more I want to love you Jesus more of you Take that opportunity I now to talk to your God. God Jesus. From the bottom of my heart. We need you, Jesus. To the depth of my soul. As we are I singing, love can you, you praise God? Can you honor <laughs> his name? I love you. Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I would like to From the you. bottom of my heart and as we to the depth of my soul. I love you. I love you. I love you. I want you to, to know that I love you, Jesus. Jesus in this place. Ah, make me love you more. So we want to call ah, Jesus. We want to call Jesus now. Jesus. Call his name, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Name beyond any other name. You. From the bottom of there is power my heart. in your name, Jesus. To the depth of my soul. There 
there is power in your great name, Jesus. Give us a love you. We worship you. I love you. We love you, Jesus, in this place. We open our heart to you. To your breath of my soul. Just call his name and say, Jesus. Jesus. And we want to do that because we know that as we mention Jesus. your name, Jesus. 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 You can see the chains have been broken in my life when Jesus. I mention your name, Jesus. Jesus. I see the doors being opened Jesus. when I say, As I mention your name, I know Jesus, Jesus. that something is happening. Jesus, can't you feel the power in his name? And I know that there's being afraid. Jesus, when we mention your name, when we mention your name. When we mention your name, when we say Jesus, 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 I know there is something that's want to walk against my destiny. So I come to you and I say, Jesus, open that door, open that door, break that door, break that door. Someone call your name this morning. Someone believe in that name this morning. Someone trust that name this morning. Someone know, know that there is power. Power. Power in the name of Jesus. And that's what you're doing now. You break chains. You bring healing. You open door. You create breakthrough. Lord, do it now. Do it now, Father. We are calling the name of Jesus. That the Baso Katama, in a brose cade katono, in brasso tama cotana, in cabo boco de cabo Jesus. Get the basso, in brasse terebro coto, get a camabaco se te camama mamas. Jesus, oh Satama, in a brose terebo, a ricatama boco satam, the cotaba. Jesus, your voice in heaven. God Almighty, Jesus, Jesus. Hey. I am Jesus. I am a new person. I have power. I have power. Jesus. We call on you. We call on you. In a 
that call upon your name shall be saved. He's opening now. The name of Jesus has power. Jesus. Oh. Ah. I know, I know. There is something that happened in our life when we mentioned the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I can feel this presence when I say Jesus. And now your body has been delivered. Jesus. Jesus. Only you by the, the men of war, the name of Jesus, the men of war, men Thank you. As the great name Have that we worship. Yes, Lord. Jesus. There is no. No, 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 no other name than the name of Jesus. Jesus. Do you believe? Do you believe? Glory to Jesus. Sometimes there are situations. There are situations that you do not understand. There are situations when there's no prayers that you can you can have. I'll come to your brain, to your mind. And the only thing that you should do is to say Jesus. Yes. Ah. You know, Jesus is a name that the whole universe, the whole thing, everything is inside that name. Your prayers, the answer, everything is there. So when you mention his name, Whatever should happen will happen. There is a power in the name of Jesus. And we know that this morning the power of the love of God has been released. Just because we mentioned the name of the chosen one. Say Jesus. Can you open your mouth and say, Jesus? Say, Jesus. I would like to pray that as you mention his name, whatever that you have in your heart as a prayer, now Jesus can see it. Jesus. Call his name and now. And let him do what he has to do for you this morning. You are not here by chance. Do it again until Lord you feel Jesus. his presence. Jesus. In the Bible, one person, a blind man, said, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you say, Jesus? Jesus. As you mention his name, may the Lord Jesus now give you Give you, give you the blessing that you need. The shadow, floodgate of heaven been opened and you receive now healing. You will receive now breakthrough. You receive now freedom. You receive now the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, put your hand together. Give him glory. Give him glory. Stop. You can stay.
stay here for hours, for hours, hours, days, days, months, months, and just say, Jesus. Yes. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for what you've started. Thank you for this service. I praise your name in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. Welcome, welcome to the, to the English service in Alves International Church. I would like you to get ready uh, for Titan offering. And I'm doing that. I'm, I, as you're doing that, I will be giving you the, the, the announcement. Please get ready. We can position the basket. We're going to try to do that within five minutes very quickly. Let me remind the whole church that every Tuesday we have from 7 to 8.30, the sales group gathering in each neighborhood. If you do not have a sales group or you don't know what it is, you can approach me at the end of the service so I may give you more information about that sales group. Next. We're going to have a very special week coming from Monday 30th until Sunday 30th. 19, we're going to have a special service, I mean a special week started on Thursday. First of all, we're going to start the week by a time of prayer of fasting and praying. We'll be fasting and from 6 to, from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. And we will be coming here at the cathedral every day, every evening from 7 to 8 to pray together. And starting, we're going to start the, 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 the special program on Thursday 16 and Friday 17. We're going to have a very special service here at the church. So we are all invited to be here on that Thursday and Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. Remind, I would like to remind the church that it's a special week, okay? So we put that in your agenda. We shall come here every day. Okay, especially starting on Thursday and Friday at 7, on the, from 7 to 9. And we're going to end uh, this coming week with the special service. We're going to have only one service this coming Sunday. With the service will start at 9 here. And we're going to have a special guest will be Prophet Div Divine David. You know that he's a very powerful man of God and every time that he comes here something very special happened for the church all right so you know him you know your god so be here at the rendezvous all right if you'll be here please just raise your hands so that i know that you're gonna be here amen thank you for your for your commitment amen the kingsman department would like to remind the church that today right after the second service we're gonna have a special gathering at papa de roland so we are all invited right after the second service to gather in the in the church courtyards for so that we can all go together. Amen. We'd like also to remind the church that actually the the women department is preparing a very special week also that will be that will take place from uh, May 23rd until May 26th and the focus will be made on the the woman mental health right so you want to be here if you are a woman if you are a lady of this church we're going to have another special week starting on May 23rd every day on May 23rd from 7 from 7 p.m. until 9 we're going to have as usual the Bible study and another time of sharing on Friday 24 May from 8 from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. we're gonna have with the with the woman department the lady department we're gonna have uh, like a small tarry the tarry is we're gonna come together for two hours from 8 to 10 from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. we're gonna be here for a time of prayer and on Saturday, 20, 25 May, from 7.30 in the morning until 10.30, we're going to have here at the church some, uh, sport, some, some activity with the, with the women. 
and we're going to hand up that busy week on Sunday 26 here with the service that will take place from 9. Amen? Amen. We're still getting ready for the, the Youth International uh, Conference that will take place here at the Cathedral in July 7, from July 7 until July 14. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, we, uh, we received uh, a bad news from uh, our elder Saleh, who lost his mother yesterday. So we'd like to invite the church to approach him. And let me see. Give me a second. Yeah. I don't have his phone number here. If you, you can approach me at the end of the service so I can share the, 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 the elder Saleh number so that you can give him a call and show him encouragement and support. Amen? Amen. If you are here, can we have, can we all stand up? I, I mean, can I, let me ask first. Is there anybody here with tithe? Is there anybody here with tithe? Let, so let's pray for the brother and right after that we'd like you to get ready for the regular offerings. Father, we give you praise for your son before you this morning. As you mentioned in the word of God, in your word, God, may the floodgate of heaven be opened now upon his head. And he shall receive from you the blessing, the abundance the, uh, that you have put aside for him. In the holy and powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we all stand up with our offerings and get ready? And right after the prayer, I'm going to leave the floor for Judah Priest to take over. And right after that, uh, Pastor Henri Dibi will be the one called to give her the word of God this morning. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise for the opportunity that you gave us this morning to come back before you with something in our hand. Father, we pray that you become and remain that great provider and that every blessing, every blessing attached to, the, to, that, to that act that we are making this morning, we shall receive it in the holy and powerful name of Jesus. And someone say, Amen. It is offering time. It is blessing time. Yes. Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. I am saying thank you, my God. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord I am very, very grateful for all, for all you have done for me. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. I am saying For all you have done for me, oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. I am saying thank you, Daddy. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord I am very, very grateful. For all, for all you have done for Papa, me, oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. And I say, and I say thank you, my God. I see God. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, priest. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Welcome to English service. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Uh, please, uh, the, if the, uh, the communication can help us with the sound down here. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Let me see your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for you all uh, who are here this morning. We have some special guests with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so in a special way, let us welcome uh, Phil Jean and Val. Amen. Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Uh, Phil Jean and Val, they are from the church in uh, Olney. Amen. Maryland. But also, these are our children in the Lord. Uh, Phil Jean was here with us for a very long time. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, he got married and he left us and went to the U.S., and that they've been there since. So we are so glad to have you home. Welcome home. Amen. But God bless you. Amen. They'll be here for a few days. So let us uh, show them love and uh, just let them know we are happy uh, to see them. Amen. We can see how they are shining. Amen. God is faithful. Marriage is good. Eh? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but to God be all the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. For the sake of time. Uh, let us go into the word. Please don't forget this week is the week of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, all throughout the week, beginning tomorrow, we will be, the church will be in, in, in prayer and fasting. So we are fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's one meal a day. And we meet here every evening from 7 to 8 for prayer. On Thursday, we will have a special gathering. Amen. A time of revival, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday morning, we're having a prophet who is coming here, prophet uh, Divin David, and uh, I know that God is going to use this time powerfully. The last time the prophet was here, he was a great blessing. So please put that in your calendar and let's be together. It's going to be Thursday at 7 p.m., Friday at 7 p.m., and Sunday morning here at the church. Next Sunday, we'll have one service. Because it's Pentecost Sunday, it's going to be at 9 a.m. So please invite someone who does not know Christ. Let us come and God will do mighty things. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. Uh, let's go into the word right quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. Uh, we started a series of messages uh, last week. And we want to continue this morning uh, to speak in that line. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, if we can please stand for the word. It's only one verse that we are going to read. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. And it says this. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. All together, let's read, for the preaching, I can't hear you, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, foolishness, and offense, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I want to speak about the foolishness of the cross or the offense of the cross. Part two. We did part one last week. Hallelujah. The offense of the cross or the foolishness of the cross. Amen. The cross is central. The cross is essential in the, in the Christian doctrine, in the Christian life. It was not our good works or wonderful personalities that brought us to salvation. Jesus paid the price at the cross and the blood that is shed is what brought us salvation. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. For he became a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone 
that hangeth on the tree. Jesus is the door that leads to eternal life. But that door goes through the cross. We can see all throughout scriptures how the teaching of the cross, the death of Jesus, plays a central role in the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. The Bible speaks of the shed blood of Jesus. The Bible speaks of the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, and the Bible says that God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman. And he said that the seed of the woman shall crush your head, making reference to the victory that Christ will win for us at the cross. For the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14, for as much as the children partook of flesh and blood, Christ himself partook of the same, that through death he might destroy. He that has the power over death, that is the devil. So this makes us to understand that at the cross, Jesus crushed the head of the serpent and gave us a great victory. We can see in the book of Numbers how the Bible makes reference to the cross when it speaks of the serpent that Moses lifted in the desert. And everyone that saw the serpent, amen, uh, 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 was healed. Hallelujah. And Jesus said in the book of John chapter 3 verse 14 that that serpent makes reference to the death of Christ at the cross. We can see in the book of Exodus chapter 12 when the Lord says to the children of Israel on the Passover night that how they need to make a sacrifice and use the blood and put it on the doorpost. And even that blood that was put on the doorpost is, is a symbol amen, uh, of, of the cross of Jesus Christ. And that is in the Old Testament. We can see how in the New Testament, um, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, one-third of the Gospel is consecrated unto the last days of Jesus on the earth. It, it, it makes reference unto the death and burial, the shed blood of Jesus at the cross. In the book of John, half of the book of John speaks of the death and the shed blood of Jesus. And Paul, in his epistles, will continually speak of the death of the Lord Jesus. So we can see how the subject matter of the death of Jesus at the cross, the shedding of his blood, is so important to the heart of God because we can see that theme coming continually in the scriptures. Hallelujah. So we realize that the cross is important to the heart of God. We realize that the shed blood of Jesus is of essence in the message of God in the Bible. So the question we ask is, uh, if the message of the cross is so dear to the heart of God, how can that message be an offense to some people? How can the message of the cross be an offense to certain people? How can that be considered foolish or offenses? We see many people wearing cross. You know, we see crosses at cemeteries, but we should not be fooled. The cross is still an offense to many today. We said last week that there is a, there is a church leader who said recently that Jesus was only an example that no one could go to heaven through the death of another. Jesus was only an example. No one can go to heaven through the death of another. So we can see how the death of Christ is an offense to many. And that is not new. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 11. Galatians chapter 5 verse 11. Paul speaks 
and he says this to the church in Galatia. He says, I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. So Paul is saying that the cross has been offensive to many for a long time and still is. But then the question before us, beloved, is why is the cross an offense? And, and I say that I believe for two or three reasons. The first one is that the cross is an offense for many because the cross exposes a lie. What is the lie that the cross exposes? The lie that the cross exposes is the one that says that sin is not as serious. I, I have met many people that say, look, uh, I, I am not a bad person, but I am not a sinner. Because after all, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't steal, I don't, I don't look for my neighbor's wife or anything like that. So I, I am not a sinner. I am not that bad. Do you understand me? Uh, um, so for some of you that know my testimony, I, I was, I was a Buddhist for a long time. I mean, in Buddhism, what we are taught and what we believe is that we are, we are good. By showing good to others, by being nice to others, we are good. Okay? And as long as we do good, we are fine in the eyes of God. So if we are fine in the eyes of God, then we don't need salvation. We are already all right. Do you understand me? And, and many people feel like that. You know, and, and they, they say, look, I, 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 I'm not that bad. You know, I am not a sinner. I don't do wrong. I don't do bad things. Hallelujah. And, and, and because I don't do bad things, I cannot, God, who is such a good God, cannot take me to hell. Do you understand me? But one of the things about the cross is that the cross exposes the lie about the unseriousness of sin. Beloved, if you don't believe that sin is serious, look at the cross. Hallelujah. And we compare ourselves to others and we feel as though we are not as bad. But the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Meaning, no matter how good we can be as human beings, we always do what? Fall short. We always fall short. If we will rely on our own righteousness. Because if sin is not that serious, then there is no need for the cross. Hallelujah. If sin is not regarded as being an horrible thing, then the cross is foolishness indeed. Because Christ died for the sins of humanity. Someone said sin is not a mere weakness. Sin is wickedness. Sin is not a flaw of personality. Sin is a mortal fault in a person. Sin is not just a mistake. Sin reveals a disease of the human heart. Sin is not just a defect in your personality, it is a disease of your soul. Jesus came to offer healing for the disease and the cross was the price. Sin is a disease and the only remedy that God gave is what the cross. So, beloved, if we don't think that the cross, that sin is that serious, then we ought to take a close look at the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross.
cross. We said last week that if we will define wickedness, that the true definition of wickedness is for mankind, people, to look at the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross, the agony he endured, the shame he had to deal with, the weeping, the shedding of his blood, to look at all that he did for the sin of men and continue to live in sin. That is the definition of wickedness. <laughs> Knowing what he endured for you and I to be where we are today. Knowing the price that he paid to bring salvation to mankind. And having that knowledge to continue to live in sin, that is the true definition of what wickedness. And I say, when we say someone is wicked, it is not the one that you ask uh, uh, money and you say, I'm not giving it to you. No. The true definition of wickedness is to see the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross for the salvation of men for the deliverance of men from sin, to see, to know about that sacrifice, and after knowing that, to choose to continue living in sin. You see, the cross exposes the sins of men. And that is why the Bible says people don't like the cross because the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 19, John 3 19 says that the light shine in darkness. Let, let, let me read this. John 3 19 says this and I'll read. It says that the deeds of men are what? Evil. John 3, 19. Read verse 18, Pastor Kadi. No. Verse 18. He that believe on him. Uh oh. Um. Okay. He that believe on him is not condemned. But he that believe not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19. Look what the verse 19 says. It says... Verse 19, it says, and this is the condemnation. Hallelujah. What does he say? And this is the word condemnation. Now, the word condemnation here is also translated, and this is the verdict. So God is saying, look, I have looked at all of this, and this is the verdict. This is what I am going to say. That light is come into the world. Continue. And men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were what? Evil. That we are offended by the cross because the cross will shed light on your evil deeds. And men don't like that. Men don't like that. And that is why nowadays I say many churches, many pastors will not preach on the cross. I went on the internet, Pastor Kadi, and I said, let me just look. I, I just, I was curious. And I put preaching, go to Google, preaching on the foolishness of the cross. Do you know how many preachers I got? Billy Graham from the years 1970, 1980. Yes. Yeah. Mind you. Billy Graham is the one preaching on the foolishness of the cross, preaching on the offense of the cross. No modern preacher preaching about this very subject. And Billy Graham was preaching about this. I looked at it, and, and you know what? My heart was bleeding. He preached about this in the 80s and early 90s. This message is not very common nowadays. Why? Because men love the deeds and the deeds are what? Evil. The message of the cross is at the heart 
of our life as believers. Because the reason why Jesus died is to break the dominion of sin over the lives of men. Man has a disease. That disease is called sin. And the remedy for that disease is the cross. Haven't you noticed that in the Bible, Pastor Kadi, some people came to Jesus and they said, Lord, heal me of my condition. And Jesus says, go, thy sins are forgiven to you. Yes. Jesus said, go, thy sin is forgiven to you. And the Bible says, when Jesus said that, the person received his healing. Thy sins are forgiven to you. Because the true problem of the person is not the cancer. The true problem of the person is not the high blood pressure. The true problem of the person has to do with what? Sin. Sin deals, uh, 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 how should I say that? The cross deals with the problem at the root cause. If you have a problem and you only deal with the branches, and you never deal with the root, the problem will remain. Sin deals with the problem of man at the root cause. And beloved, at the root cause, the problem of man. The cross deals with the problem of man at the root cause. And at the root cause, the real problem of man has to do with sin. The cross deals with the problem of man at the root cause. And at the root cause, the problem of man has to do with what? Sin. So when the cross has dealt with the root cause of the problem, automatically the rest will just vanish. Once the sin problem is dealt with, you can see your healing. You can see your breakthrough. You can see your salvation. You can see your restoration when the real problem is dealt with at the cross. At the root cross. So it has become an offense for men <laughs> because men love their what evil deeds. It's not only men in the church. Uh, it's not only men in the world. I have even realized that even in the church, men love the evil deeds. So people are uncomfortable with messages that will make them uncomfortable, with messages that will reveal the nature of sin in their lives. You know, people want to, you know, they just want to come to church. Don't just talk about them having a girlfriend while they are married. People don't want, they want to come to church. Don't just talk about the money that they steal at the workplace. People just, they just want to come to church. Don't talk about these things. <laughs> you know, that I'm living with a man I am not married with. Don't talk about that. People just want to come to church. Don't talk about the wickedness in the heart. You are seated beside your own brother, but you all evil against him, against her. We just want to come to church. But pastor, don't talk about that. I say in this church, it will not prosper. <laughs> oh, yes. We talk about it. Yeah. Because at the root cause of man's problem is what? Sin. And the cross has come to expose the lies of the devil. The cross has come that each one of us, by looking at that cross, we will see our real state and cry out, to the Lord Jesus for salvation. That's why I like this song that says, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the time. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart 
rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. It was at the cross that I first received my sight. And many of us today in the church, outside of the church, need to come to the cross. Many of us need to come to the cross. Not run away from it, but we need to come to it. Because it is at the cross that the scales will fall off your eyes. It is at the cross that the blindness will be removed. It is at the cross that the burden will roll away. It is at the cross that you can be changed and transformed into a new man, into a new woman. It is not when you come to Harvest Church. It is good. Come to Harvest Church now. But when you come here, then come to the cross. Don't just come to church. Come to the cross. Because church does not transform. It is the cross that will transform you. It is the cross that will change you. It is the cross that will give you life, life eternal. It is the cross that will give you victory over the flesh, victory over the works of the devil, victory over every seed of evil. Beloved, can you fight against the devil? No. Can you fight against the flesh? No. Can you fight against sin? No, you are too weak. You can never win this battle on your own. That is why you need to come at the feet of the master at the cross and say, Jesus, I acknowledge that without you, I cannot make it. Without you, I cannot make it. Without you, I cannot make it. Let the victory of the cross manifest right now in my life and in my situation. Let the victory of the cross manifest right now and break the curse over my life. Let the victory of the cross make that happen even now in the name of Jesus. It is the sacrifice of Christ, the shedding of his blood, that gives you and I access to the Father. It is the shedding of his blood that sets us free from the lies, from the pit of hell. From the lies, from the pit of hell. True transformation and change happens at the feet of the cross. How do you explain that nowadays you have people who are in the church one year, two years, five years, ten years, but there is no change. There is no transformation. Yeah. You have people, when they open their mouth, you wonder, are these people Christians? Are these people saved? Because many of us still have never had the experience Where you will come and say, Lord, I acknowledge that without you, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. The cross exposes, let me give you a second reason, and then I have probably five or six reasons. We'll continue next week. The cross <laughs> exposes the lie of the enemy regarding sin. Beloved. There is a remedy for the problem of sin. It is called the cross of Jesus Christ. The remedy to the problem of sin is not good intentions. Many people have good intentions, but today they are not in the church. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The remedy to the church is not strong will. Many people are strong willed, but they are not in the church today. The remedy of sin is the cross. So the cross exposes that lie, y'all. And anytime you are tempted to sin, remember that at the cross, 
Jesus paid the price that you also may overcome. He paid the price. He paid the price. You don't have to fall prey to sin any longer. Can I say that again? I say you don't have to fall prey to sin any longer. At the cross, he paid the price. So when you are tempted, remember what he did at the cross. Don't run away from it. Look at it. Moses said to the children of Israel, if you look at the serpent on the pole, you shall be healed. Not look away from it. Look at it. Look at it. That's what will bring you healing. Look at the cross. That's what will bring you victory. Look at it. Don't look away from it. Look at it. And remember that men love darkness more than light. Because the deeds were evil. Two. The cross is an offense. Because second of all. Ouch. I have five minutes left. The cross calls for self-denial. We don't like to deny ourselves. So many in the church, many outside of the church are offended by the cross. What Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, take up your cross and follow me. This is a cross to self-denial. And many see such a request by the Lord as pure foolishness. If you will be my disciple, Pick up, uh, uh, deny yourself. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. The cross is a call to self-denial. And many look at it as an offense because we don't want to sacrifice, especially in today's Christendom. Beloved, can I say this? A religion that does not ask for any sacrifice has no power to save. Can I say that again? I say a religion that has no sacrifice, a religion that asks nothing of you, has no power to save. No power. The power of the faith, we confess, resides in our capacity to sacrifice. Yeah. That's the power of, you know, you know, you know, what makes Christendom powerful is that Christians, we are the only ones who have a prophet, a God, Jesus, who died for us. No other religion has anything like that. That's what makes Christianity powerful. Jesus died and gave his life for you and me. The Bible says in the book of Matthew that there was a rich young ruler who came to Jesus. And he says, Matthew 19, verse 16 to 22. He said, Lord Jesus, what must I do? that I might have eternal life. And Jesus says, go, sell all you have, give to the poor, and follow me. Jesus is saying, go, remove the world out of your heart. Give it away. Pick up your cross and come follow me. Lord, what must I do to have eternal life? And many come to the church like the rich young ruler. They want to know, Pastor, what must I do that I may have eternal life? Pastor, what can I do? Do I need to pay tithe? Do I need to give offering? Do I need to sing in the choir? Do I need to uh, uh, um, give to the poor? Pastor, I am ready to do it. And Jesus said, do you want to inherit eternal life? Okay, very well. Go, 
Sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Meaning, go, let the word come out of your heart. Go, let covetousness come out of your heart. Go, let iniquity come out of your heart. Go, let envy and jealousy come out of your heart. Go, let all of the works of the flesh come out of your heart. Go, let the pride, the selfishness come out of your heart. Go, do that. Then, pick up your cross and follow me. And the Bible says, that was, became an offense to the young man and he left. Isn't that somewhat familiar? That many people come here in the church and they say they are offended. Do you know why? Because like Jesus, we told them, go, let the pride, the covetousness in your heart be removed. Let the stinginess be removed. Let the backbiting be removed. Let the love for sin and the world be removed from your heart. And many here saw that as an offense, so they left. Many of us see the cross as an offense. Why? Because the cross is a call to self-denial. How will we deny ourselves? That many of us, we say first service starts at 9. Second service starts at 10.30. And you are like, I, 9 o'clock, that's too early. I worked all week. Then should I come to church at 9? How can you call coming to church on Sunday morning? too early and you feel as though it is too much of a sacrifice asking you. You have not seen the cross so. <laughs> and many of us see the cross as an offense that even I told certain people why is it that we have two services here at the church and you only come to, come to, you only come to one. Today is the Lord's day so this day is for God so Technically, you should be in church from 9 and from 8 in the morning until church is finished now. And some people see that, hi, pastor, why will I stay so long at the church? Well, because the life in Christ is a, is a life of self-denial. 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 Which is your life is not your own. It belongs to him. And many are offended at the cross. Because every time you look at the cross, you remember that, that with what Christ did, what you are asked to do is nothing. So we don't like the cross. We don't like that thing. Because anytime we look at it, it reminds you of our sins. Every time we look at it, it reminds us that, you know, we are called to a life of sacrifice. And we don't like it. But too bad. Then change the religions now. <laughs> yeah. But if you will be a Christian and a believer, then this, this doctrine, this life in Christ is a life where we cannot tolerate sin. It is a life where we need to learn to sacrifice. 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 Letting self die. He said in Romans chapter 6 verse 11, he, he, said, he said, reckon yourself as dead in Christ. The problem is, many of us, we are just too alive. So we will have a hard time experiencing the victory of the cross. Maybe next week I'll talk to you because Jesus said, he said to live is to die now. Yeah. If you are going to experience life, this year is our life is our year of abundant life. The only way you experience abundant life is to die. Because he said, if the master seed does not fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But when it dies, it bears much fruit. It bears much fruit in abundance. We need to learn how to go. We should not run while the word is running away from the cross. You and I need to learn to embrace the cross. Because our victory on the daily basis is in the sacrifice of 
of Jesus at the cross. When he died, he gave us salvation. Salvation is a package. In salvation, you have healing, you have deliverance, you have prosperity, you have uh, uh, curses being broken. In salvation, all that you can ever desire for life and godliness is in the package of salvation. But that can be received through his sacrifice at the cross. Let us all stand. I'm done. Uh, actually, time is up. Let's stand. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. And, and speak to the Lord right now. We know where we are in our work with him. Pray for a greater revelation of the sacrifice of Jesus in your life and in your circumstances. Talk to him right now. Talk to him. Talk to him. Lord, by your sacrifice at the cross, we are delivered. We are set free from the dominion of sin. Lord, by your sacrifice at the cross, we receive the strength to live right. Lord, by your sacrifice at the cross, eternal life is communicated to us. It is because you died and through our belief, in your death at the cross that we can be called sons of the most high God we give you praise this morning we give you glory and honor Lord let the testimony of Jesus be evident in our lives and through our lives but much more let the victory of the cross be manifested in every circumstances right now Lord Jesus, because you pay the price, every sickness, every disease that is affecting our bodies now must go. Because you pay the price, we declare that the dominion of sin is broken, cancelled, and nullified. Because you pay the price, we declare that the ancestral curse is now removed in the name of Jesus. Because you pay the price, right now Akazimaya. by the power of your blood right now I declare that every works of darkness is nullified Akazimaya. thank you oh God thank you Jesus for what you have done at the cross for me what you have done at the cross for the people of God here harvest hallelujah we give you glory and we give you honor Lord we receive by faith what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Right where you are, just thank God for his sacrifice at the cross. Thank God for the victory that he has given you through what he has done. We bless you, O God. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. We give you adoration. We give you exaltation. Lord, yes, Lord. So the Lord, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was then by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross. Where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the Hallelujah, this morning I don't know the situation you are faced with but I have come to tell you you can take it to the cross hallelujah you can take it to him you can take it at the feet of the master he is faithful he is faithful 
For the Bible says that if God could give his only son for you and I, what else shall he not give us? I don't care the situation you are faced with. I declare that as you bring it at the feet of Jesus, as you bring it to the cross right now, the Lord gives you victory. The Lord gives you victory. The Lord gives you victory. If you are believing God for healing, as you come at the cross, you receive your healing. If you are believing God for a deliverance, as you come to the cross, you receive deliverance. As you believe God to give you strength to overcome a situation in your life, as you come to the cross, he will give you that strength. As you believe God for the curse to be removed from your life, as you come to the cross, the curse is removed even now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We'll be together again uh, this Sunday. Hallelujah. This Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. So we'll come together. Uh, we'll only have one service. We are coming together Sunday morning at 9. Uh, let us come, invite someone who does not know Christ, and I'm sure that God will bless us. Amen. Uh, let us continue to listen to these messages. There is something that God wants to do in our lives. He's taking us to another level. Amen. And that is why he's, he's bringing the cross at the center of, of, of our preaching, at the center of our walk in faith. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen. God bless you and see you next week.